good morning so we were discussing the auto cycles okay so if you recall we were discussing the different processes and the expressions for internal energy change work trans work done and heat added and we completed this table and showed that the delta u for the cyclic process is zero delta w is delta q now we also express the uh, efficiency eta wrote the expression of eta in terms of this heat quantities like this so now in this cycle one very important parameter is there which is defined as volumetric compression ratio i will write like this a volumetric compression ratio a volumetric compression ratio volumetric volumetric compression ratio which is denoted as rv which is equal to the ratio of the two volumes that is the maximum volume to the minimum volume v1 by v2 v1 by v2 so this is the volumetric compression ratio now we have the expression for eta well we have the expression for eta is equal to what is eta if you see here eta is 1 minus please tell 1 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t4 minus t1 divide from here we can see t3 minus t2 well now we can relate this volume and now our job is to express this efficiency in terms of the volumetric compression ratio which is a very important parameter for an auto cycle for an auto cycle from practical consideration it is a theoretical cycle for internal combustion engine spark ignition engine. you should know this thing these are the concepts actually even if you can solve the auto cycle problem as if i ask that why well, compression volumetric compression ratio is so important why you are interested to express efficiency in terms of volumetric compression ratio many people cannot answer this question but if i tell you to find this you can immediately find it by the process calculation this is because it is the volume ratios that minimum and maximum volume which is a very important design parameter because an automobile engine spark ignition engine is designed on the basic constraint of a volume ratio because this space is fixed it has to be designed within a limited space we cannot have a engine of very big space yes space is the criterion okay so therefore if i do so now t3 by t4 i can write if you just look back to this equation sorry this equation that earlier we deduced for an ideal gas we know for an isentropic process pv to the power gamma is constant gamma is cp by q again the equation of states pv is equal to rt r is the characteristic gas constant v is the specific volume then if we eliminate p we get t v to the power 1 minus gamma constant or we can write t v to the power gamma minus 1 constant t v to the power gamma minus 1 constant. that is that means the ratios of t equals to the ratios of v raised to the power gamma minus 1 we can write that now if we write this for these two processes we get for these processes for this process t3 by t4 is v4 by v3 and which is v1 by v2 because v4 v1 same v3 v2 same that means rv to the power gamma minus 1 because t v to the power gamma minus 1 is constant so v4 by v3 clear well again what we can write for this process t2 by t1 is again v1 by v2 that means rv to the power gamma minus 1 now if i express t4 in terms of t3 t3 divided by rv to the power gamma minus 1 and again t2 sorry t1 in terms of t2 t2 divided by rv to the power gamma minus 1 then t3 minus t2 as a common cancels from both the sides then we get eta is equal to 1 minus 1 by rv to the power gamma minus 1 clear so if i express t4 and t1 in terms of t3 and t2 we get this so this is an expression where you see that the efficiency of the auto cycle is a function of the volumetric compression ratio which is defined as the maximum to minimum volume of the cycle this is clear from the cycle diagram that this cycle works between two volume limits that is the minimum volume that is the maximum volume and this volumetric compression ratio is defined as v1 by v2 which is rv and it is 1 minus 1 by rv to the power gamma minus 1 that means it is a direct uh, it is a function of rv only as we increase the volumetric compression ratio 
efficiency increases monotonically. All right. So, after this task, now we will go to diesel cycle. We will go to diesel cycle. Similar to similar in the similar way as we started auto cycle, diesel cycle is again an air standard cycle, but this is followed in a IC engine where diesel is used and the particular engine cycle follows a compression ignition engine. That means, the combustion and the admission of fuel and air, fuel vapor and air or fuel and air is made in a different way as done in a spark ignition engine. So, let us first start then the principle of operation of a diesel engine. Petrol engine works on the principle of spark ignition engine, but the diesel engine works on the principle of diesel engine. So, let us first understand this. The geometry is same that means, the physical processes are almost the same that is a piston cylinder is a closed system process cylinder reciprocates a piston reciprocates within a cylinder and there is obviously a mechanism that is the connecting rod crank mechanism and we have the inlet and the outlet manifold similar way we have inlet and outlet valve. So, instead of a spark here there is an injector this is this is the exhaust this is the inlet and this is an injector I will explain this thing injector injector of fuel injector of fuel. What are the differences? Now, similar way the piston reciprocates between two dead center positions one is the inner dead center or top dead center if this is in vertical configuration and another is the outer dead center or bottom dead center and obviously, this is the stroke 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 of the piston. Now, what is the difference in the inlet stroke that means, initially when the piston from the inner dead center position descends down in its first stroke movement if we consider from here at the starting point then due to the expansion of the gases which are left here that we do not know that we will know after the completion of the cycle suction is created and this valve is open in the similar way the material comes in and this material in case of a diesel engine is not air and fuel vapor mixture simple air that means, the oxidizer for burning which is air this is being admitted. So, therefore, in the admission this first stroke descending part of the piston simple fresh air from the atmosphere is sucked in and the piston when it reaches the bottom dead center or outer dead center position this is full of air. Then what happens these two valves are closed and the air is then pushed compressed as the piston ascends upward from the inner outer dead center position to inner dead center position both the valves are closed. In spark ignition engine or petrol engine it was air and fuel vapor mixture instead of air. Now, when it is compressed now here another thing you have to understand that the piston head this clearance volume okay, and the stroke length everything that everything is designed in such a way that when the piston ascends up and reaches its IDC or top dead center position, the pressure due to compression is much higher as compared to that of the petrol engine. And accordingly, since air is a compressible fluid as you know the temperature is higher. So, therefore, pressure and temperature of the air at the end of the compression stroke that second stroke of the piston is much higher as compared to that of a petrol engine. And this temperature is higher than the auto ignition temperature of the fuel diesel which is being ignited. For all fuels to burn there is a temperature above which no initiation is required for burning. If you wait for some time which is known as ignition delay the spontaneous reaction starts taking place. So, this temperature is known as auto ignition temperature and that is a characteristic feature that is a characteristic feature of a fuel. Another thing you have to know at this juncture that when you burn a liquid fuel in air the burning does not take place in liquid phase. Burning that is the rapid exothermic oxidation reaction which is taking place with release of energy at high temperature and creating luminosity that which is uh, known as flame a luminous flame and all these things these all these things happen in gas phase reaction. So, therefore, this gas phase reaction means this reaction has to take place between oxidizer for example, air with the fuel vapor not with the liquid fuel. 
So, therefore, the primary requirement for burning any liquid fuel is to vaporize it first and to mix this vapor and the air because the mixing molecular mixing is important that molecular diffusion and molecular mixing is not possible between the two phases like liquid and vapor. It is possible either between liquid to liquid or between gas to gas that means vapor to air. So, therefore, this molecular mixing is only possible in the same phase that is the gas phase and therefore, the burning takes place in the gas phase. So, primary requirement of burning any liquid fuel anywhere starting from your domestic purpose of stove and uh, any IC engines or gas turbine engines or oil fired boiler. So, liquid fuel has to be vapor, vaporized first, evaporated or vaporized first and it has to be made vapor and then vapor has to mix properly with the air then only the burning takes place. Now, depending upon the temperature whether the temperature is below or above the auto ignition temperature you require an igniter. If the temperature is below the auto ignition temperature of the mixture then you require an igniter to initiate the combustion process. But if it is above the auto ignition temperature which is a characteristic property of the fuel itself then the temperatures uh, then the reaction starts after certain time which is known as ignition delay for the chemical reaction to take place. So, reaction starts. So, therefore, the vaporization of the fuel is very important. In carburetor in a petrol engine this vaporization occurs. In the classical petrol engine carburetor what happens fuel is injected and air is sucked and the way the fuel is injected and air flows they are transverse to each other and the uh, uh, this jet of the fuel is broken into minute drops and automatically it is evaporated. Vapor, uh, evaporated or vaporized. So, this mechanism this thing is done in a diesel engine inside the cylinder that means the vaporization of the uh, diesel and also the mixing of the vapor with the air for the burning. So, for that what happened the diesel fuel is injected at through a nozzle it is purely a converging duct known as injector through an injector which directs a jet that means the fuel at very high pressure is pass is allowed to pass through an converging passage known as injector and it comes out through very small orifice in the form of a very high speed jet of diesel which due to inherent hydrodynamic instability with the surrounding uh, in the surrounding atmosphere which is a compressed gas is broken up into spray of very minute droplets. This process is known as atomization that is why sometimes it is told that diesel is injected into the form of an atomized spray and entire thing happens very close to the orifice. So, that if you look you will see that a very fine spray in the form of minute liquid drops is coming out it is looking like as uh, uh, looking as good as a vapor and you see that when the liquid is broken into minute drops of very small diameter then the surface area of a given mass increases surface area of a given mass increases and when the surface area increases the rate of vaporization increases. So, basic purpose of directing it into form of an atomized spray is to increase the surface area for a quick vaporization. These are the informations not much required for our thermodynamic study. So, that immediately vaporization takes place and burning occurs, but what happens this burning is not so homogeneous this is because when you spray the fuel the droplets are dispersed at different locations and they go on vaporizing you understand. So, depending upon the location where the vaporization is uh, very fast and mixing is very fast the ignition starts. So, ignition starts heterogeneously at different position not in homogeneous way because in petrol engine the mixture is homogeneous in its composition throughout, but here as the spray is injected and because of the spatial dispersion of the spray and its vaporization characteristics at different point the mixture ratios are varying. So, that heterogeneous combustion takes place. So, instantaneously the burning does not take place by that time the piston descends downward. So, there is a difference this is a basic difference between the combustion of a petrol engine and that of a diesel engine, but there are many other points which will be covered in an IC engine class. So, therefore, this burning process which makes this temperature which creates the temperature of this uh, air ultimately to a very high value because of this burning that takes place during some time by which the piston moves downward. So, that this process of burning is simulated by a constant pressure heating than a constant volume heating that is the most important thing you will have to understand. So, what happens because of this heterogeneous combustion this type of combustion is known as droplet combustion droplet combustion that is because of the combustion of the individual fuel droplet as it vaporizes it makes a burning. So, localized hot spots or burning zones are created I am not going in much detail of it droplet combustion sorry droplet combustion. 
So, what happens? The temperature and pressure rises and the piston comes downward in this descending stroke that is the power stroke. When it comes here, this is opened and immediately the gases is expelled and the pressure is restored to atmospheric pressure and this is being simulated at this in the same way as we have done in petrol engine that as even heat rejection process makes the heat rejection at constant volume. So, that piston is almost here and then slowly piston moves out up to expel the gases out of this. So, this process is now simulated by an air standard cycle where this part I can show this will cancel with each other. That means, now this is this the same uh, cycle. No, I have not drawn this earlier. So, this is sorry, this is this cycle that means this is 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. So, this is the cycle. This is the theoretical cycle and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, again 5. Similar way I did because this is the inlet stroke, this is the exhaust stroke. So, these two coincides each other. So, 1, 2 is the therefore, in theoretical cycle 1, 2 is the isentropic compression up to this. Then we consider this conversion of diesel, this process with a similar to a constant pressure heat addition. That means, there is a source where heat is added during which the piston moves downward so that the pressure remains constant. This is the change in the volume. Then isentropic expansion, this is isentropic compression. So, the piston moves downward to this point, isentropic compression end of it. Then we bring a heat sink and making thermal contact to this cylinder so that heat is lost, heat rejection takes place. So, long the piston key uh, remains in this position that means that constant volume so that a temperature is reduced and pressure is the same atmospheric pressure. Okay? We just simulate this as if by the actual process when the valve is open, the entire hot gas goes out and the almost pressure equalization takes place. Then again the compression process takes place to expel the remaining charges here. So, this is by the isentropic compression. Again the cycle starts from here. So, therefore, in an air standard cycle which is known as diesel cycle, this is known as diesel cycle, diesel cycle. What we do? We just replace it, uh, we just describe it by again the four processes, isentropic compression, constant pressure process, one isentropic compression process, another constant pressure process, that is the heat addition process, during which the volume changes, but pressure remains constant and isentropic expansion and constant volume heat rejection process. That means, it consists of four processes, but differ difference is that instead of constant volume process, one constant pressure process is there for heat addition. Clear? that is the difference between diesel and auto cycle as far as the air standard cycles are concerned. This is because of the fact that the operation of diesel engine and operation of petrol engine are different and to make these two cycles at the theor as the theoretical cycles for these two engines, there is a difference in their ideal cycle nature. Okay. So, now the similar way I start doing that uh, analysis as we have done. Let us draw again this cycle quickly. Let us draw again this cycle quickly 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the PV diagram. PV diagram, this is important because this suction and exhaust we are not drawing. This is this, this is. So, okay, there is no problem. I also should uh, show you that this is QA process. That means, the heat added and here heat rejected. Okay. So, these are two isentropic process, no question of heat addition rejection. Now, here if we draw the T s diagram, it will look same, but to show that one has is having a concept, one should do like this, that this is a constant pressure process 1, 2, 2, 3, then 3, 4, then this is a constant volume process. What is the difference? Do you know this looks same qualitatively a constant pressure line and constant volume line but a constant volume line is having a higher slope in a T-S plane than a constant pressure line. This you can prove. A constant pressure line is having a lesser slope or less steep than the constant volume line. So, therefore, the person who will draw the diagram, he should, he should have the idea that this line should be less steep than the constant volume line. So, okay, things are clear. So, these are the isentropic process. So, therefore, I can tell that this is the heat addition process heat addition process and this is the heat rejection process. 
Okay, clear? And obviously, the area under this 2, 3, 2, A, B, 3, this is heat addition, this is heat rejection. Similarly, the area under the carbon PV diagram shows the work transfer. So, the net area of the net loop is the net work done and this is the net heat added, they are equal. Okay, now let us go hurriedly to this process. Make this, okay, as we are doing, this is the chart. Well, quick process and then delta u, then what? W work done, very good, you know this thing very well, this is the way one should do Q heat added. Quick, one by one, the process, one, two, what will be this? Is there anything which is zero now? Again, non-flow process. So, non-flow process, this two thing is very important, non-flow process and another thing is that Q is equal to delta U plus W. Now, tell me for 2, 3, is the anything 0 here? Q, oh, 1, 2. I start with 1, 2. Yes, Q, 0. Then, obviously, Q, 0, delta U first you should write always. C, V, T, 2 minus T, 1. I should write delta U first, T, 3 minus T, 2. Until and unless this is a isothermal process. This is T, 4 minus T, 3. C, V, T, 1 minus T, 4. 4, 1 process. So, I think I should write this first. Then when Q is 0, then delta U is minus delta, minus uh, W is minus delta U. So, C V T 1 minus T 2. C V T 1 minus T 2. That means, T 1 is less than T 2. That means, this is negative. That means, work is done on this system. All right, okay, yeah. so 2, 3 make a 2, 3 delta U. Is there anything 0 here? No. No, very good. So, what can I do? You, we can write Q is a Cp T3 minus T2, where from you get it at constant pressure process, even for a non-flow system, Q is equal to H3 minus H2, because du plus PdB, PdB means D of PV, that means D of U plus PV, that is D of H, very good. That means Q, Q is DQ, delta Q is du plus PdV. At constant pressure process, it is D of U plus PV, that is D of H, very good. That means dH, and since air is an ideal gas, that means Cp T3 minus Cp. Very good. Very good. Then what? What can I do for the? R into T3 minus T2. Why? Cb minus Cb is R into T3. Very good. If you want to write that, I will be happy. But I am rather inclined to write P2 into V3 minus V2 to show them clearly that it is a PdB work. It comes at constant. Same thing. Because I do not write in terms of temperature because a beginner will see and he will get confused that work may temperature case again. But if he sees that, he will see that P2 and P3 are same. P2 is equal to P3. So, a constant pressure and change in the volume is the work done. So, therefore, I will prefer, I am little inclined to write this fashion. So, this is nothing but R into T3 minus T2. Very good. I am happy. So, 3, 4, care. is there anything 0? Q, Q0. Q0 for, oh, 3 to 4, Q0. Oh, I am going one step ahead. Q0. So, Q0, very good, 3 to 4. Then what happens? Q0 means W is just Cv T3 minus T4. T3 minus T4. So, T3 is more than T4. So, therefore, work is being done by the system. Then 4, 1, I think this is 0. So, work is 0 means Q is delta U. That means Cv T1 minus T4. As we know, the constant volume heat addition is Cv T1 minus T4. Okay, all right. Then, Lagado, this first law, that delta U, 0, then delta W must be must be equal to delta Q. Well, what is efficiency? Eta is 1 minus, if I tell minus, then C V T 1 minus T 4 is the heat addition. I write in terms of C V T 1 minus T 4, the magnitude, because negative sign I have taken here, divided by C P T 3 minus T 4. 
clear so this becomes equal to 1 minus t1 minus t4 same thing divided by gamma t3 minus t4 clear T4 minus T1 because T1 is less. T4 minus T1, yes. I told T4 minus T1, I have written, I have taken the minus here, I have written the minus, yes. Otherwise, it will be plus, yes, it's a magnitude. I told that, but I wrote wrongly. Okay. Thank you very much. T4 minus T1. Very good. Now, there are certain definitions. Compression ratio, volumetric compression ratio remains as it is, V1 by V. Volumetric compression ratio, V1 by V. Another ratio is defined as expansion, cut-off ratio. See, that is cut-off ratio. What is this? Cut-off ratio is V3 by V. Cut-off ratio is V3 by V. Well, then cut-off ratio, then another ratio is RE. Expansion ratio. Expansion ratio. What is expansion ratio? V4 by V4. Well, now you can write this thing here. Of course, in one diagram, this is the problem. So, if you solve this, you will get. Now, my expression for efficiency eta is eta is 1 minus 1 by gamma you, want, you can see that t1 minus t4 t4 minus t1 4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t4 all right now you can express things like this now you can write with this definition of rv it is not required much. I can put it here. Now, with these definitions of RV, RC and RE, we can write RV is equal to RC into RE. Can we write RC into RE? Because V2 by V4. Okay, V2, V1 by V2. V1 is equal to V4. So, we can write the RV is equal to RC cutoff ratio into expansion ratio. We can write it. Okay. Now, we can relate again the same way this T and V for this process. Now, how can we write T and V? Now, if we write T3 by T4, what is T3 by T4? T3 by T4 is V4 by V3. That means Re to the power gamma minus 1 because T V to the power gamma minus 1 is constant. So this is very routine thing. I can tell you that you can do it. T3 by T4 is Re to the power gamma minus 1. Again, this Re can be expressed in terms of Rv by Rc. That means T3 by T4 can be written as Rv by Rc to the power gamma minus 1. All right? Okay? Then I can make a relationship between T3 and T4. Another relationship I can make between T2 and T1. T2 by T1 is V1 by V2. V1 by V2 is Rv to the power gamma minus 1. Then T2, T1, T3, T4, but T2, T3 are not same. So, again I can write another equation. T3 by T2, this is a constant pressure process. So, V and T are directly proportional. So, T3 by T2 is V3 by V2, which is cut off ratio. Now, from this, my sole intention will be to eliminate RE, which I have done, expansion ratio. My sole objective is to express this efficiency in terms of cut off ratio and the compression ratio, because these two are important parameters in actual design. That you have to know, that why I am going to substitute this or eliminate this. This is because these two are the important geometrical parameters. Then it becomes a routine task and if you do so with this calculation, then it becomes simple that all the temperatures that you express in a single temperature and a function of R V R C only and then temperature cancels out. With this algebraic steps only, 
with little uh, rearrangement we get this expression this r v to the power gamma minus 1 this was the auto cycle efficiency. So, this part is multiplied by 1 by gamma r c to the power gamma minus 1 Oh, r c I wrote like this r c to the power gamma minus 1 divided by r c minus 1, where r c is the cut off ratio r c is the cut off ratio what is cut off ratio cut off ratio is this one r c is v 3 by v 2. So, therefore, one can write r c greater than 1. Ah, yes. Sir, is that yes. 1 in the exponential RC gamma, gamma minus, minus no, no, 1 is not exponential minus 1 RC to the power gamma minus 1 divided by RC minus 1 not gamma minus 1 otherwise I would have told RC to the power gamma minus 1 RC to the power gamma minus 1 ok when RC greater than 1 this part is greater than 1 this part is greater than 1 so that for the same volumetric compression ratio, this is eta diesel, eta auto is greater than eta diesel. Why? This is because eta auto is this part, eta auto is this part, eta auto is this part, eta auto. So, 1 minus this into something greater than 1. That means, with this something greater than 1 is added, so that eta diesel is less than eta auto. Clear? Again, I am writing eta diesel, very simple school level things, 1 minus R v to the power gamma minus 1 into this part, 1 by gamma R c to the power gamma divided by R c. So, how can you prove it that this is greater than always greater than 1 when R c greater than 1? Can anybody tell how can you prove it? So, that we can tell that eta auto greater than eta diesel for same, which is very important result for same value of R v, for same value of R v, for same value of R v eta auto greater than eta diesel, same compression ratio, auto cycle is more efficient than diesel cycle. Why this is greater than 1? How can you prove this? Can anybody tell? No GP series, no GP series. Why? Is, what is GP series? Do not tell like that. If R c is greater than, why not you R c is 1 plus x, where x is greater than 0. Then you expand it, this x. So, it will be 1 plus things which are greater than 0. Because R c to the power gamma, that means 1 plus gamma x plus gamma, gamma minus 1 factorial 2. Oh, these are so simple thing if I have to tell. So, therefore, divided by x and gamma and ultimately minus 1. So, minus 1, minus 1 cancels. So, gamma, gamma will cancel, okay? And this x cancels. So, 1 power will be reduced plus x square. That means 1 ajaiga, 1 plus all positive quantities greater than 0. This is school level, class 8 level thing. So, one can prove that for R c greater than 1. So, this is greater than 1. One can show that for the same compression ratio, the auto cycle is more efficient than the diesel cycle. Now, next what I will tell you is the uh, why R c cut off ratio? Very good question. See, few people have not asked this question. Why R c is the cut off ratio? What is the meaning of cut off? Compression ratio, I understand that this volume ratio represents the compression. That if it is high, more is the compression. If it is low, less is the compression. So, compression ratio gives me an index how much is the compression, how much is the volume change. Why it is cut off ratio? No, 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 no. Not ignited. So, you try to understand, no, no, it is not correct, we have gone little close to that in this cycle, you can understand that what is 2, 2 is at the end of this, when the ignition starts, ignition does not go continuously, there is a time after which ignition is cut off, sorry ignition, sorry injection is cut off, the fuel is injected during a certain interval of time, fuel is injected during certain interval of time, during which a certain definite quantity of fuel is injected, then it is cut off. It is not a continuous injection of fuel in a gas turbine plant, which I will be describing now. It is a steady flow process. It is a non-flow process. So, for during some interval of time, after the piston reaches the top dead center position, the fuel is injected. And when this injector is cut off, this is simulated in the ideal cycle as if the heat transfer process ends. That means, this is the volume ratio or the travel of the piston during which injection is there after which injection is cut off that is why it is known as cut off ratio that means the injection of fuel is cut off 
So, V2 is the maximum pressure, you can go on increasing it. So, the more and more uh, efficient will be the combustion. But V2, V3 represent V2 to V3 the process during which the heat addition takes place. That means, during which the burning takes place, after which there is no burning. That means, as if the injector is injecting fuel during this process, if you compare this with the ideal cycle. So, V3 by V2 in the ideal cycle simulates the burning process during which the injection of fuel is made. So, injection is cut off. From there, the word cut off ratio, injection is cut off. Very good. I am very happy I should have told that thing because usually I highlight this point because there is nothing great in deducing these things. All thermodynamics books are there in anybody, anybody in the class, anywhere they can deduce this thing. Eta is 1 minus 1 by Rv to the bar gamma minus 1. But the most important things are those things which you have to know from the concept. Okay. Then next is the gas turbine plant. But uh, I do not know the gas turbine plant whether we can start it or not. What is the time now? Okay, we have uh, time. Now, okay, next we will start a Breton cycle. Breton cycle. We should start at least. Next class we will. A Breton cycle. Now, Breton cycle is an again an air standard cycle which is an ideal cycle for a gas turbine plant. So, therefore, we should know what is a gas turbine plant. Probably you have heard the name that gas turbine plant or a gas turbine engines are used in practical many practical purposes. One very important practical purposes are aircraft engines, rocket engines. Okay. Another practical purposes is the practical purpose is the uh, industrial power generation, installation gas turbine plant. You know, even in thermal power station, when the peak load has to be met up, it is met up by the gas turbine power plant because of certain inherent characteristics of the gas turbine plant over that of the thermal power station. And the major use of gas turbine plant is for the aircraft engines. It is also used in marine purposes in some automotive industries also for automotive engines also gas turbines are used. So, these are the practical uses of gas turbine plant which will be taught in detail afterwards in your applied thermodynamics class. But I will now explain what a gas turbine plant is and what does it consist. It consists of these components. One is the compressor. One is the compressor. You see, this is the compressor where air comes into the compressor from the atmosphere and it goes at a higher pressure and temperature. Then after that, it goes to a combustion chamber. It is an uniform cross sectional area duct almost. This is a combustion chamber. Combustion chamber where fuel is injected from outside, fuel is injected from outside, all these details I am not showing, fuel is injected, injected, fuel is in, fuel injected from outside and this high pressure and temperature air which is being compressed by the compressor enters and they burn, the fuel burns with the air and ultimately a high pressure gas which is the burn products of the fuel with air comes out and this is ultimately passed or expanded through a turbine. This is a turbine. They are connected. The turbine and compressor are connected by the same shaft. Okay. Then, the after expansion through the turbine, the high temperature, but a low pressure. Low means atmospheric pressure because it is rejected to atmosphere. It is rejected to atmosphere. And this is from atmosphere. Air from atmosphere and high temperature gas, relatively high temperature. There is a temperature drop, but still high temperature gas rejected to atmosphere. atmosphere rejected to atmosphere. So, this is a gas turbine plant. This is known as a open cycle gas turbine plant. Why? The cycle is open, it is not closed. That means, Actually, this environment, the vast environment takes part of the closing link. That means, air is always taken afresh from the atmosphere, where this gas is being rejected to the atmosphere. And even if the gas could have been cooled and sent air, then it is not air again. So, you have to always send air. So, you cannot take this gas. That is why it is rejected. For our purpose, we require air in the compressor. This is the open cycle gas turbine plant, which, are, which is used in aircraft engines, automotive engines and marine engines even in the industrial gas turbine plants, except the nuclear 
positive sense where a closed cycle gas turbine is, uh, is used, which will be exactly similar to the Breton cycle. So, this is actually a gas turbine plant. So, what happened? Work is being done by the turbine because of this expansion of the high temperature, high pressure gas. A some part of the work is used to drive the compressor. So, that net work is coming out from here, net work. And heat is added here. Actually, heat is not added. Chemical energy is added in the term from the in terms uh, we in terms of the fuel injected, so that this chemical energy is used in burning the fuel with the air and the thermal energy is generated, which creates a very high temperature of the products of combustion. That means air starts with a state point one at a pressure P1 and a temperature T1, then it goes to a, a state two at a temperature P2 and T2, where P2 is greater than P1 and T2 is greater than T1. Okay. Then it is being burned in a combustion chamber which is a steady flow device. Continuously the air flow and continuously the fuel injection takes place. As I told earlier, there is a continuous fuel injection and continuous burning takes place. So, except from very small pressure drop due to friction, the pressure remains almost constant. So, at the point 3, P3 is almost equal to P2, but T3 is much greater than T2 because of the exothermic reaction. The combustion chamber is totally insulated. Now, then this T3 is expanded P3 T3 that is state point 3 is coming to 4 where P4 T4 when it is injected to atmospheric pressure so back pressure of the turbine is equal to P1 which is equal to atmospheric pressure P1 is equal to Pa but T4 is less than T3 though it is less than T3 because of the expansion in the turbine but it is much greater than Ta so T1 or Ta T1 is Ta that means it is greater than the atmospheric temperature. That is why I have written high temperature gas is rejected to atmosphere. So, therefore, we see a gas turbine plant unlike a, uh, a reciprocating ice engine that means petrol engine or diesel engine, it is a steady flow device, non flow, not is a flow process. It pertains to a flow process, a steady flow device, continuous flow takes place. It is not a non flow process. So, mass coming in and going out. All right, and this is an open cycle gas turbine plant. In closed cycle gas turbine plant, things are different. In a closed cycle gas turbine plant, which will be uh, approximating the plant towards the Breton cycle, actual cycle, this is something different. We tell this in a closed cycle gas turbine plant, it is like this compressor is there, and air is coming here. At then, what happened is that there is no fuel injection. That means the air is being heated from an external source. That means the external hot fluid comes and goes and it heats the air. Now, this is 2. From 2 to 3, that means here the heat is added, QA. Then the next part is the same. That means this is the turbine part. Sorry, turbine part. This is the turbine part. So, from 3 to 4 is the turbine air. Then the same air is being cooled, same air is cooled, same air is cooled while going from 4 to 1 by a coolant which flows. That means, here the heat is rejected, QR. That means, air is the working fluid. This is a closed cycle gas turbine plant. This is exactly a thermodynamic cycle, closed type cycle gas turbine plant. It is a thermodynamic cycle where air is the working fluid. Working fluid does not change in its constituents. The same mass is totally circulated, this is a steady flow system circulated throughout the cycle, where this part which is actually the combustion chamber, in all practical cases it is being simulated as a heat exchanger, where external sources gives the heat to the air. And similarly, instead of rejecting this to atmosphere and taking the fresh air from the atmosphere, when you consider the vast atmosphere takes the part of the sink, which ultimately makes the make up the missing link in the cycle. But here exactly what happens, the exchanger, heat exchanger is conceived where the air is being cooled through a coolant fluid. And this happens exactly, this is a, a cycle, this is really a thermodynamic cycle and this is known as closed cycle gas turbine plant. Open cycle gas turbine plant does not uh, resemble a thermodynamic cycle, but this resembles a thermodynamic cycle. And this type of gas turbine plant is being operated in a nuclear reactor where we get a high temperature heat source from the nuclear rod actually. The reaction takes place due to nuclear fission. And similarly, we have coolant. The coolants are used for cooling this gas rod. So, there is sufficient coolant which are used to cool this air also. So, that 
this is being made a closed cycle gas turbine plant where air is the working fluid which is being heated from an external source and being cooled from by an external sink okay so however we see that there is a compressor there is a turbine there is a heat exchanger or combustion chamber and there is a heat exchanger for heat rejections these are heat exchangers heat exchanger for heat rejection or in open cycle this is being rejected and fresh air cool fresh cold air from atmosphere is being taken so this is the two types of gas turbine power plant and this power plant is being approximated by a theoretical cycle known as breton cycle which we will discuss tomorrow okay tomorrow thursday so today okay thank you no attendance you go